political figure was the 45th president of the United no, I'm States. Not, I'm, not de- I'm not denying that. Or You're calling that in- like, no, you keep talking like he's Alex Jones. He's <laughs> the president of the United States. <laughs> This is the latest podcast we've ever done in our life. No, to, yeah, no. yeah, it is. Yeah, it no is. Way. Yes, it is. It's 11 p.m. It's the latest podcast we've ever done in our life, and there's only one guest that we would that we would do this for. Yeah, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the 45th president of the United States. We actually did a video with Donald Trump. I'm not even kidding. It got taken down. Unfortunately, you guys didn't get to watch it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you missed that, sorry. We're gonna be talking about that. How are you guys feeling today? We're in Vegas. Usually not a good sign. Uh, you guys, I'm gonna just say it frankly right off the bat. Our you went to bed at like 7 p.m. last night. You spent your night <laughs> reading Tony Robbins' newest book. I'm building the side men characters. are in town. KSI's in town. <laughs> Never happens. Why am I alone entertaining these guys at the club? You are that friend. You are that friend who makes your friends feel bad about making good decisions. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a toxic person. Okay. okay. And he okay. says something. He talks about this book that's gonna lead you to a better life. I mean, it's bro. A but it's like you start this global national company, Emerp. A prime <laughs> with, with, <laughs> with, I read it backwards, sorry. <laughs> with KSI, and you know, the whole squad comes here from the yeah. UK, and you, you, tur- you, you get your turn down service and stick chocolates in your ears. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? I'm down bad. I'm down very bad. What'd you say? Did they turn you down? They, they want to do a pod- you want to do a podcast, but you didn't. No, because oh. they're here on holiday, Jeff. They're not here to work. I'm, it's What's a, a holiday? I've been, Dog, that's what they that's say. That's what in they the say UK. in the UK. It's it's, it's a vacation's a holiday. They're on holiday. The sidemen were were wanting to relax, which is mm, that I wouldn't say that's what they're trying to do because they did very little of that last night. These boys were firing at, on all cylinders, firing, bro. Yeah, they fell off like one by one. So like the first one to go home. So we went to XS. Chain smokers were on on stage. We had a big ass table with a bunch of prime and a bunch of booze and like a. Also, they all have girlfriends. I should throw that out as well. Ooh. But we were there. But we were there. But we were there hanging out. And you know, first I think Ethan left, and then Simon, and then KSI wanted to leave, so they all left. But the late heads were like, "Dude, me, Zerka, uh, that the real like, bro, bro. We went till nine thirty a.m. on the on yeah, the tables, bro, gambling, having right. a blast. Those guys, those guys are real, are fun guys, bro. If you catch Mike past four thirty a.m., it gets dark. Mm-hmm. We said that on the Chainsmokers podcast. Mm-hmm. We had them on the podcast. You went out with them. Mike, I, I just can't do it. I'm, I'm an adult. I'm yeah. grown. I came to Vegas to work. I came to Vegas to shoot Impulse. Okay, and I, and KSI I'm, on the side, man. What? It's a business partner. I was, business, with, business I, was, partner. I was with KSI all day. Not the, oh. I was with him all day. Oh, and my question is, do you think the people that came here to watch Dana White on this podcast give a fuck about any of this? Does your sound just cut gone. out? Gone. Sound's gone. Completely. The sound's gone. It's almost like nothing that I ever did in life mattered. It's like it's like you know. Show the show the sound show, guy. Show the sound guy he's struggling he, with a mask. He's on, from Vegas. Pissed off, ready to fucking. He's, he's got strangle, a Vegas hat on. That's how you can tell. Uh, I, maybe what we're Why saying still mask? matters though. Why is he wearing a mask? Because he's really being fucking safe, bro. He's being safe. Can you hear anything? I can't hear shit. George can hear everything. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> this sucks, dude. This sucks. Yo, no. Yo, if I was Dana White, I'd be late to my podcast too. We <laughs> fucking suck. <laughs> the worst. He's not even late. He flew. He flew from Orlando. I think. I think one of his family members had a cheerleading competition. <laughs> no, really? Can you confirm, Lene? I think that's accurate. <laughs> his PR person's here. Her name is Lene. We chanted for her. We do chants when we meet new people, new cool people. Lene, 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 Lene. Lene, 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 Lene. Anything? Can you imagine seeing Dana White well, whatever, dude. Stuff. Fuck it. We don't take breaks on the show. Why do you watch NASCAR? Sweating. Why do what? Why do you? Why does one watch NASCAR? Yeah. NASCAR. You're waiting for the car crash. This is the car crash. Dude, You're witnessing it in real time. NASCAR. The 34 car cut off the 21. He's on fire. <laughs> Everyone's fucking going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that idiot. He's burning. He's making another <laughs> left turn. <laughs> no, this is this is tough. And this is what I'm saying. Like surely, you know, the Dana White impulsive crossover. It can garner a big audience. We have a lot of potential here, and yeah. you're you're witnessing us ruin all of it. We're ruining all of it. Wouldn't be the first time, dude. I mean, we're just not the number one podcast anymore. Not according to that one billboard in L.A. I've been looking for that motherfucker. Ever. I've been driving. <laughs> for you can't. 40, 50 here's what. Minutes. Here's what you can't do. You can't call yourself the number one podcast like we've been doing 
forever. That's, That's the end of the sentence. Well, hold on a second. So here's here's what I'll say. Here's <laughs> We've been doing that. How did it end up back on my lap? I think our commercial should just be every single time that you've said we're number one podcast, number one podcast, number one podcast. Just me saying we're the number one podcast over and over and over again. I haven't even done it for this episode yet. By the way, um, Mr. S- Mr. S- Kyle. Stefan, why would you fucking tell me his name is Kyle? <laughs> Dorado, Dorado, Dorado. Dorado. He lives why? in Dorado. Dorado. Great. His whole name, I guess. Dorado, Was all that recorded? Oh, good. Okay, okay, okay. We're keeping all that, right? I think so. Okay. Uh, uh, the world's number one podcast. I feel like you can go about this in two ways. One is statistically, which is fucking lame. Is, That's the lamest way to measure anything. 100% with data and actual you facts. Fucking nerds. But that technically, if you wanted to be a fucking number cruncher, Excel files down a row or, or columns or whatever, it would be Joe Rogan. Right. So Rogan's got the biggest audience. Now, if you want to do it based on the sentiment of the people doing the podcast, then we're the number one podcast in the world. You know what I'm saying? Because we believe it is. So therefore, we are. I do think we are the number one podcast in the world. And by the way, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. These these are facts. Right, right, right. Uh, Sure, I'm a little biased. It's my podcast. But I wouldn't lie about something that isn't true. You know, I embarrassingly thought we were actually the number one podcast. That's I was talking to some, my friends, like, yeah, we're on the number one podcast. Because you do realize you're not actually the number one podcast. No, right? what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand what you're what saying. Are you, what are you saying? I'm all hands off on this one, bro. Yeah, because <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into the lines then. Well, I just, I'm just confused. As I was wrong, and you guys are both right. Got it, got it. Okay. Sorry. Won't happen again. Um, <laughs> well said, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yo, so just sitting here and waiting nah, for listen, day to nah, wait. but listen, <laughs> I want to you know, crazy. Crazy. I, so I promised myself as a Middle Eastern, I would never, uh, I would never bomb this hard in my life. But uh, this is possibly the worst start to. No, I disagree. No, I disagree. Not. You guys had worse beginnings than this. No, no, no. no this absolutely is one of the best. Not. Oh, got, got you. You know what I love is that you guys are always synced. Like regardless of which direction you guys go, you guys are very much synced. Watch this. Were you expecting that to happen in real time? Pick a number one out of ten. One, two, three, seven. seven. Again, one, two, three, three. Five. Fuck <laughs> you. No, but the pussy, fact Mike. that we got it the first time was good. Three. Because, dude, I don't dude, fucking know. Five is two less than seven. Yo, can we unpack the other thing that we were talking about? Or did we already unpack it? What? Me being mean? Just how the fuck are we no, knowing I, what's in your mind? Is that is that is that me being mean? We could do that, yeah. Why be mean to George? Do you am I have I been mean to you? Severely. But and I only say that because all of my loved ones are telling me. <laughs> 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 I didn't even notice it until somebody was like, "Dude, are you okay with that?" And I was like, "What are you talking about, bro?" What? And I was like, "And there were stages. There was like, you know, he's he's in a boxing match right now. He's really stressed. And then there was like, guys, he's get he's on drugs. You know, like let's give him a chance. And then he was off of okay. drugs. And now you're co- you're clearly doing well. And now I'm just offended." <laughs> what did, what have I said? Just nothing nice. I, if you, we could, who the, who. Oh, oh, I ordered cookies. See, like, you never even listen to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just um, Did um, you actually order cookies? And a milkshake. We actually are. Did you order us a milkshake? Uh, you, there's, there's three big cookies. But how many milkshakes? Do you see what I'm saying here? Bro, I didn't know, I didn't know y- y'all would be here. I, uh, I have a funny story. I, maybe we could talk about that. Me and Reed were in the elevator, and I walk in, and I see one... Light on. It's level 38. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? Why, who's, wh- who came in and just left? So I hit our level, and I go, huh. And this drunk guy walks in. Can't form sentences. Can't move. And in my heart, I go, if this man is going to level 38 right now, Jesus Christ is looking out for him. So I told Reed. And this guy's like, argh, 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 and he can't form any sentences. Vegas, baby. So I asked him, sir, where are you going? And he goes, level 38. And it just he just... Gets off. Is there a chance that he hit it and no. in his drunken stupor Walked exited out, the elevator yeah. and then was like, oh, I'm out of the wrong floor. floor. I got back in. You just ruined so much for me. I'm a man of logic, George. Is that wow. being mean? Is that Was that mean? No, no, that wasn't mean. That was actually the I, nicest you've ever talked to me. 
I'm going to ask you something. Is, is your sound cutting in and out? No, my sound's great. But the only problem is I don't want to hear anything that's coming out of your mouth. So I wish it would cut off completely. <laughs> See, that's nice. Uh, can we zoom into this? This is Maybe the most delicious thing I've ever seen in my life. Do, are, do, you, do you generally rate things based on visual appearance? I'm just a really positive guy. And it's led me down bad paths. But I, I just, I'm just here. We, had, we went and got lunch today. It was delicious. Did, we ran into some fans. I got to say this. Mike, hands down, the best person to meet when it comes to fans. He loves his... Attention and clout. <laughs> See, this is well, what George was talking about. <laughs> oh, was that mean? Does that mean? No, but you well, know... Before okay, you so, go any so, further, no, Mr. I, I B th sat th right th there, and he said otherwise, motherfucker. I, I he thought, said otherwise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with Logan. I did think that it was like, you know, he's like, oh, this is my moment now. It's going to flee in a couple years. Like, and so, like, I thought that was him doing it. But, like, he literally sits there and gets to know them, talks to them, love them. He was even giving a guy a noogie. He was hugging this other dude. I was like, what the fuck is yeah, happening that's here? That's assault, that's brother. That's assault, man. It is. See you going in prison. To prison. <laughs> hey, brother. Hope you like court. Hope you like jail Are you time. Are fucking good over there? You guys got any more of those podcast topics? Or are we just going to sit here and talk about fucking garbage all day until Dana White gets here? This can't be the way we start this Dana White. <laughs> like, Bro, who knows what we use? We may, cut, we may cut some of this. Who knows? I, I think we use all of it. Yeah, I agree. You know, guys, this is what it's like to see behind the scenes of the number one podcast in the world. This is what really happens. I can't believe that girl that gave everyone a head a fucking finger. Um, nope, throat. that's not coming back on the conversation. <laughs> but it was it was worth it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot, man. I texted I, her today. Actually, no, How weird we're not is that? talking about this shit. Oh, okay, because I'm the one that has to go fucking meet with her at small coffee shops, in cars with tinted windows and reclined seats. No, I'm just, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have some news, actually. No, no, bro. You know, I mean, yeah. I was riding a quad in Puerto Rico the other day, and, really? it, and yeah, the back of it caught on fire. And Mac, Mac was in the Can Am behind me, and he pulled up next to me going super fast he's screaming at me screaming at me i'm like what are you screaming at he goes you're on fire <laughs> I'm like i'm like i know i'm killing it <laughs> i'm like i'm fucking crushing it dude he's like no you're on fire and i look back and the whole shit is smoking i'm like oh this is this is how i die and i've been thinking about that a lot recently i don't know how if I you're could gonna do die. the whole show with, yeah. you with the milkshake throat you sound you like <laughs> you sound like mike tyson with shrooms in his mouth what are you talking about <laughs> yeah how i'm gonna die like, what the fuck did someone throw up? Oh. Um, what do you mean? Like, are you having visions of it? No, no visions. It just concerns me. Oh, because uh, you're on the right path. So, uh, Is that why? Yes, because when you're really on something good, the devil tries to fuck you up. Are bro. you serious? I swear to God. Any I say this all the time because every time something really, really good happens, I immediately think my mom's going to die. Immediately, and I get sad. And I get really, really fucking sad. And my mom used to always tell me, don't let the devil blind you from the joy that you've built. So you're doing all this thing. You're about to launch your project. You're about to do all these good things. And he's just trying to steal your joy the whole I'm time. I'm scared. Don't be scared. If you're going to die, bro, look what you've done. But I, mm. Be happy with it, bro. And listen, I know this sounds really fucked up, but if you die this young, you just become a legend. Sound cut out. Are you? Cut, it's back. Can you imagine George going up on stage at the Oscars, winning the, uh, the Oscar for, for best comedic performance, and he's crying hysterically, and people are like, George, like, this should be the happiest moment of your life. Why are you crying? And he's like, because now my mom has to die. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? No, bro, bro, think about it. No, Why I'm is not going to think about, about this. I'll, 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 like, could you I'll imagine it. getting I'll a trophy it. for something? You're like, oh, too bad, but now the dog's dead. Are like, you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Well, I'm saying you shouldn't. You can't, and you say it from like a place of like wisdom. Like, <laughs> it is. Bro, these DMs, man. I'm trying to figure out what to do with these girls. Take them on a date, Mike. Go to a go to a concert, MMA festival, MMA festival. <laughs> How to, an MMA festival. That go to, go to a baseball game, a basketball gig. Ladies, today's video is sponsored by Seeky, not men. <laughs> Live events are finally back. We're excited. Whether it's football, baseball, basketball, concerts, MMA, or festivals, or MMA festivals, <laughs> SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. SeatGeek is the absolute best place to buy tickets. We've got the app on our phone right here, and Coachella's coming up soon. So it might be a good idea to start searching for tickets right here in the app. They rate every ticket from 0 to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. I've also got a hookup for you. Use the code LOGAN for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with promo code LOGAN. 
Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you, SeatGeek. We love you. Back to the program. Are you not happy right now? I'm extremely happy. Okay, were you not happy a few months ago doing your project? You were lost and confused, but yet you weren't thinking about death? No, I... He Tor always Tor is thinking... He's been telling me for 10 years he's scared he's going to hey, die hey, and somebody's going to hey, film hey, him. Hey, let him fucking answer. How does your voice get that high? I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> no, Mike's right. Mike's right. Look, I'm, I'm, I th I'm an overthinker. Mm -hmm. I think about everything. Like, I think about everything. It's bad. And then my thoughts have thoughts. What are your thoughts on thoughts? My thoughts on thoughts, I, I measure them. So I notice and I... Like, and do I you think about what people think about? I write my shit down. I write my feelings down so I reflect on them later. Every time I've ever felt like I'm about to die or somebody you love is about to die, it's always right when I should be celebrating my wins. So I'm like, fuck this. So now I just laugh about it. I'm just scared. Things are going so well. What did I just explain this to you? Well, you don't want to die right now because you want to reap the rewards that you sowed. Am I greedy? No. I'm you're, selfish and spoiled. You're just mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not selfish. If anything, you're the least selfish person I've ever met. There's Bro, you've literally given us all money to go gamble and you didn't even record it. I'll never forget that. You literally pulled out money for no reason because we'd all gamble. gave everybody $1,000, including Reed. Not yeah, a, but not, 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 not everybody. Well, because he's rich. Not everybody. And that I've seen that three times. But I have all of this. And by money. the way, George, I only did that so you talk about it on a podcast one day and make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> You and Mike, bro. Fuck you guys. <laughs> There's probably a term for what we're talking about, and I and to in in a way you're right <laughs> because it's it's that feeling you get when it, and it's a very negative outlook on life because when I got clean and started doing good shit in my life, I always felt like the the other shoe. You know what they call the other shoe is gonna drop? Is that right? Am I saying that right? Does that Some, sound but right? Exactly. Something's... Right when you got clean and you got to the place you wanted to be. But and the devil got mad because know... he wanted you to keep doing drugs. Do you want to know why, why I thought I think that way, though? Originally, was because I had conditioned myself to think that way. Because in my addiction, the other shoe always did drop. Like, always, bro. Because I was doing horrible things. So I got used to bad things happening. You condition yourself. You have to... Lately, I've been noticing... Because I I've obviously have a severe anxiety problem and fucking overthink all the time and have all kinds of issues, right? Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I tried to quiet my brain. Quiet. Make those thoughts stop. Make those thoughts stop. Recently, I've been making a concerted effort. Is that right? Yeah, you did it. To, uh, to not make the thoughts stop, but to overcome them with positive thoughts. This is the first time in my life I've ever tried this. I've ever tried this. Can so I, it's not so mm. it's not like you're not going to have anxiety today. It's you're do, you're going to do great today. You're going to be the best you've ever been today. You're going to be well spoken today. You're going to be on top of your shit today. It seems easy on paper. Can I say something? Yeah, but it's a, but it's a habit, right? It's do you know what I'm saying? Like you've always done it. You've always written little letters to yourself in the mirror. My dick really isn't that small. Like blah, you know what I'm saying? Like you and you put and, it up and there. And look what happened with that one in particular. <laughs> You're these, wrong. These things never change. <laughs> a lot of a lot of progress happens with a lot of work, right? So if you, a bodybuilder's buff, he had to work out a lot. He had to eat. He had to make the right decisions. What about steroids? So you guys have made great decisions when it comes to business. You guys have made great decisions when it comes to like a lot of things. But what you guys have cared to ever open up is that spiritual side. So what I would really, really, really highly suggest is tap in. And I'm not suggesting you mind, but I'm just saying tap into one and see how it affects your emotions because emotions what is you, a spiritual value. I'm spiritual. I'm very spiritual. I pray every night. In fact, <clears throat> wait, what? It's not, what? You do? Since when? I I'm, pray every night. I pray twice a day. I'll pray right now. I'll do a prayer right now like I do normally. But all I want to do is just do once. I want you guys to go to one. You don't want to hear my prayer? I was about to pray. I was about to pray. You're going to cut him off and put your finger in the air at him like this? Well, I just, okay. I'm so sorry. You fingered me. Go, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. That was mean of me. No, it's the end of the day. Like normally around this hour, I'd be doing my prayers. This is what I say. <clears throat> Dear God, creator universe, thank you for another blessed day on this blessed planet. It's a beautiful place you've created. Happy to be here. Just really happy to be here. Uh, feel very grateful that I was very productive today. Felt very full and complete. I got to do what I wanted to do, which was nice. And I'm feeling very fulfilled again. And that feels good. And I'm very happy and thankful about that. I'm exhausted. But I like that because it means I put all of myself into today. And I want to express my gratitude and hope for another good day tomorrow. Amen. Thank you. I love that. So here's, here's one sec. One sec. Where was the, where's the building? Where is, where is you asking your creator to give you strength, wisdom, no, faith, never, knowledge? never, ever. So never. that's, that you're wrestling with pride. Ask. I never ask. You're wrestling with pride. No. What, because you think you're at the level of God that you don't need to ask him for anything? What the fuck? You guys should fight right now.
That's what I'm saying, bro. No, no, for Not real. No, what? Ask, ask for what? I'm just asking. Grateful. You shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knocking the door shall be open. These are scripture based. Jesus is literally I talking to you about. It, it. I feel like if I, but again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I feel like if I ask, there's there's repercussions i don't know i don't know i just it's like you're doing it for bro, the wrong literally reason. the devil's pushing like you in a headlock to reason. not i don't know grow is like, anyone else hearing this yeah, you yeah. don't want to grow you're scared of it and that's totally fine but if there is a god and a creator of the universe and you're his son and you're asking for something do you think he's going to put you in a position of like devastation just because you asked them if have you ever asked your mom and dad for something that's not good for you they're not going to give it to you but if it's good for you they will make it fruitful so you should never be scared of asking. You're scared of having a real honest conversation. Once you start, a lot of things are going to start letting go. What do you ask for when you pray? Uh, do you ask for me to be nicer? And if not, can you? I ask God <laughs> to open up a relationship between you and him to a point where it's not, uh, it's not selfish. And you're not just sitting there talking. You know, your relationship with God is like a relationship that you would have with a girl or a wife that you're like saying the things that would make her happy, but you're not really caring or doing the actual work. Me? Yes. Because we've outlined earlier in this podcast, I'm horrible with relationships. That's what I'm saying. So I'm praying for it. You get what I'm saying? Like, so that is my prayer for you. But my thing is, Baby, I think you're... <laughs> <laughs> God, please take him all the way down to the ground no. so he can be humble. No. No. But for example, right? The worst thing to you was Japan, but that is the best character development you've ever had And in a life. great country in general. I, we have to go there. I love Tokyo. I have to but go But what I'm there. saying is that huge moment that you at one point in your life were like, I can't believe this happened to me. I wish it never happened to me. Now you're like, I'm so glad it happened to me. So what I'm saying is, if God's going to put you in a sign of struggle... Your arms hurt when you work them out, right? Because you're tearing muscles, but it also grows. It's also stronger. If you ask God for strength, he's going to put you through situations that's going to make you stronger. So you should ask for that. Because, bro, you're the leader of this ship. If you're fucking weak, we're all going fucking down. So don't be scared of asking God to make you strong. I don't want to be the leader anymore. Yes. I'll start making prayers. I'll take it. <laughs> We've got some news for you, George. I quit. This, this show's called Stupid Ass Show. Now. I'm not going to sit here on the Dana White podcast without fucking Dana White. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so if oh, you guys shit, can all we had open up first, to chapter eight. We had our first host walk, dude. Oh, no. Well, I mean, I've done it several no, times I'm, when I get I'm, sweaty. I am waiting at this fucking door. Yeah, yeah. Until D White comes through. It. Yeah, yeah. If we don't use that segment, can I can I keep it? Because it was a great conversation. We're using it all. George, we're not cutting. This is an uncut episode. Okay, great. Speaking I'm going to have a piece of this. Speaking of it's a, warm. Speaking of an uncut episode, I'm going to read you guys a DM that I had with this girl. <laughs> read it. Read it. <laughs> this is a good one. I said, she said, I'm going to stay in and shower. Oh, wait. She said, I thought you were, I thought you were back, back from Vegas. And I said, no, I would have been asking to hang out with you. She said, so another night with no sex. And I said, story of my life. With that emoji where it's like kind of like, twisted up like the smirk emoji and she wrote and she wrote same and i wrote what are we gonna do with ourselves and she said i know and all my toys are at home and i said what's your go-to and she said i have i have a suction dildo i put in the shower and fuck myself on it just shot for the fucking fences bro this guy's on a facetime call behind you well, that's fine oh speaking of could you zoom into me real quick yesterday my prayer to god no, there's no way you could go. I said, out of that Ad and, and I, I that. go, I want to have a conversation with Logan about his relationship. <laughs> we had one today. Dude, is that not crazy? Is there a chance that you're one of the Muppets? Is that possible? I thought about it a lot. Is I kind of want to be. I want to be on, is it Sesame Street? Is that Muppets or no? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please don't leave. Not two guests. Not two co hosts. We can't do this. Please don't. Please don't. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen. An Assyrian boy, first land to hit this country. My, my parents were immigrants. And they asked me, how are you going to take over this world? I go, first, I'm going to make friends. And then, slowly but surely, I'm going to attack them to the point where they're going to want to leave the podcast. And then I'm going to take it all over. There's going to be comments down below being like, I can't believe this is happening. This is the worst day of my life. George Janko, the guy who usually doesn't talk, is now taking over. Please kill me now. Don't do that. Listen up. Be wise. Because I'm coming for you as well. I'm coming for your heart. I will take it. That lonely self that you have in the mirror, you look every single day, you brush, and you're angry, so you leave hate comments. I'm coming for you. I'm praying for you. There is no room for anger in my heart, ladies and gentlemen. Like David and Goliath, I am ready to take on this big beast. I think we've been set up. No. I think we've been set up. She wouldn't have came here. Tell him what I'm saying, George. I think Nelk uh, told no, tell him. Tell him what I'm saying, not what you think you're saying. Oh, okay, so go ahead. Well, yeah, I already said it. 
I didn't hear what you said. Logan just said that I think Nelk set us up. I think Nelk set us up. It's what Logan just said. Logan said this. I think it's a setup. Shut I think up. it's a setup. Shut up. They wouldn't have straight, 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 straight up. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, eat this cookie. Well, hold on. That a could second. have made it in your mouth. Well, hold on a second. How dare you come back? They would never. They would never. They would never set us up, but send what equates to a hostage. So Lynette. She's gone. She's fucking gone. The publicist is gone. They set us fucking no, up. I know. See what she I know. So held down a I'm, wall. I'm not. I'm not. Are you fucking serious? I'm not kidding. Show her chair. No. She's fucking gone. She was right there. Like this. Like this. Here's proof. Show her chair, Caleb. Look, there's no one in that chair. Look, no. Here, here's what I think happened. No joke. Ten minutes out. What? I just ruined the bed. But go ahead. Ten minutes out. Yeah. Oh, he's coming. Yeah, but go along with the bed because we're good. Keep thought, on. Dylan. Here's what I thought happened. I thought when the publicist left, she's like, I was going to go call him. And then she left. Because notice, she got here 20 minutes early. She got here 20 minutes early. I think it was to scout us. She clearly saw what kind of tomfoolery we were getting yeah. into. She's like, these kids are fucking idiots. Or, or she fucking was here. Mike, you or, ruined it. Or she was here, like, recording us. And, like, she's going to sell it to TMZ. Your hair looks like spaghetti. Okay, I'm going over there. So so what's good? We're just going to... we're just gonna 10, minutes, 10, 10 minutes hard. Watch. Is it going to happen? 10 minutes? And then, and then all of a sudden, he's going to have a flat tire. Oh, sorry, I got a flat tire. I was trying to put Mosville on a headlock and <laughs> the tire broke. Tire fell off the wheel. About 10 minutes. Ago. All right, Jeff, come on. Let's go. It's your time to shine. Get in the fucking chair, dude. Everybody loves you. Come sit down. Shut up. I'm not asking. You're not my manager. Get in the podcast, Jeff. I got to say this. Lately, you, you smell a little bit. That's impossible. Why is that? Because that's just not true. Oh, was this a lead into the ad? I'm sorry. That's all right. This episode of Impulsive is brought to you by Dr. Squatch. <laughs> Dr. Squatch is changing the way men approach personal care with high-performance natural products that smell amazing and will have you feeling and looking your best. Their products will help you feel like a man and smell like a champion. Dr. Squatch will take your whole routine to the next level, helping you level up your soap and step up your scent. Choose your favorite lineup of soaps, hair care, deodorant, and more so you never have another boring shower or routine again because who likes boring? No one. Here's the best part. Dr. Squatch soaps are made in the USA using only the finest ingredients Mother Nature has to offer. They're transparent about their ingredients and their production. In fact, all of their products are at least 98% natural in origin. Seriously, just look at the label. You can pronounce everything on there. Other generic body washes have harsh chemicals and harmful synthetics, and that is gross. They've got an easy, easy subscription plan and 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you use Dr. Squatch and can honestly say their products are not the best you've ever used, they'll send you your money back, no questions asked. Ditch your shit products and get some <laughs> Dr. Squatch. New customers get 20% off orders, $20 or more using my code DSQ Impulsive. Sniff it, sniff it, smell it. That actually smells fantastic. I could use some. Back to the program. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. This, do we make money on this show? A little. Like a, he gave oh, me a gives thumbs, thumbs up. Because <laughs> I, I, I never get paid. I'll but get paid I, maybe I, like I want everybody here to know that if I ever get fucked over in the contract, it's probably because my attorney is Logan's attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally just comes and goes, yeah, this is what we're going to do. All right, buddy? And I was like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> no, he, he asked me too. He goes, by the way, you know, I'm doing this deal for George. George Janko, the guy you just signed on Impulsive. Uh, we represent him too. And I'm like, this is fuck attorney client privilege. I thought privilege. that's not supposed I, to happen. There's something, there's something you're supposed to sign. I think it's a no, we did, we did, yeah. No, but I didn't. Conflict, waiver. conflict, conflict waiver? of interest. You guys are conflicted. That's why conflicted. Because he's supposed to represent our both, in, both of our best interests. But if we're represented you by this, say, hey, we trust that you're gonna like do the deal. Sure. George can't read anyway, so we. <laughs> You see what happens? It, 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 it appears. When I was taking pictures of the chain smokers, you know he yelled out, Why are you even in the picture? <laughs> That's me. And then you know what fucking Reed did? He goes, He goes, <laughs> what is, Does Reed make any other fucking <laughs> face? <laughs> That's he, just, just, he just goes, That's his And just, then a Pez came out and I just <laughs> ate it. And I was sad. I was just sitting there eating the Pez. <laughs> But you know what's great about prayer is I literally was like, how am I going to talk to Logan about this? He's like, podcast. <laughs> he was going to talk about it. By the way, podcast. by the way, this is my outlet. Straight up, this I, I talk about a lot of personal stuff in this podcast. And it's very cathartic to me. Something about, something about, oh, this is bad. Something about an audience makes me feel accountable. Sociopath. You're a, you're a showman. And also, you only do it for likes. <laughs> Well, this is why you and him chaser. are two pieces of box. Uh, well, come on. Your brother bro. was right about you. You're a cloud chaser. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Dude, Jake sent me a text. I can't believe it. Well, can't well, believe you guys it. never talk? What's 
<laughs> I can't believe he texted me. Ever since he's gotten so famous, he never responds. Jake, Jake sent me a text the other day. I don't know if he wants me sharing this, but I don't care. Because I, I think it's honestly. awesome. I don't care. Okay. I'm mean. Okay. He said, yo, yo, three O's on the second yo. One O on the first yo. I want to know how you view me, what you think my strengths are, and what my hurtful actions are. I want you to be brutally honest, asking a couple of most trusted people around me. No rush. You can take your time with it. Dude, that guy's Man. building on himself. I'm telling you, there's more to this story. He George. has a therapist. George, I have, I'm, is, are you, were you done? That's it. Oh, I thought you were going to read your response. No, he's... Logan didn't respond to anything. He just, oh, you just you left, didn't, you just left him on scene. No, I said, I, said, <laughs> I said, what a sick fucking question. I'm going to ask my friends this too. And I'm going to ask you guys. You don't want to ask us right now. I, I think you'd be... <laughs> no, not, not, no, please don't. No, no. <laughs> I sent him... You know what I sent him back? I, I, sent, I took like an hour to write a, a thing on a plane for him. I sent him one of those messages where... You have to click the arrow. You have to click the message to open up. Oh, way it opens more. a novel. But a lot of a lot of good, you know. And look, look, come on, that's a, that's a breakdown only a brother could provide, bro. I could break down for you. I've had eight years of uh, sharing rooms with you. You didn't even send me. But by the way, you're still a lot better than you used to be. There's just a lot of things that you need to work on. Uh, do you, not, uh, that's pretty personal. I don't know. What's going on right now? Is this the Dana White podcast? He, he texted me. He said. On my way, <clears throat> but you could tell he typed OMW and then it auto. On my way! Yeah. <laughs> like, no one ever wants to say that. No one ever wants to fucking say that. But what if, he actually, what if it's actually like the way him, they put his it. head back out the I mean, his head out the window, and he's like. <laughs> you really going that, with that? I'm a comedian. What are you going to do? Beat me up? Uh, yes. That's totally fine. I'm broke. I'll sue him, and I'll have so much money, and then I'll limp in here, and then maybe, maybe, just maybe. You guys will start being nice to me. So you can what do you mean, me. you guys? Uh, actually, you Mike, Mike's pretty it? nice to me. You think I've ever been mean to a co-host on the show? Oh. By the way, I was watching. I did I did look back on how you guys treated them. They just didn't talk. They didn't really no, like. No, it wasn't that, dude. It was. Now you're, now you're being mean. We're not getting into this I'm shit. I'm not being mean. They just didn't talk to you guys. Probably because they were terrified of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> fucking scared You know what I told my dad My dad's like well, How does Logan make you feel I go sometimes When I see him I get super excited And sometimes I get super nervous <laughs> Wait Wait That's that's fucked up Dude mad people Why would you get nervous Mad people Bro because dude you, you serious you, You're like You know what you are You're like an atom bomb That sometimes you're like You're like Yo we're having a great day Okay this is what it is If Logan's having a great day We're having a great day If Logan's having a bad day Fuck the rest of the day, my friend. That's why at the end I was like, I'm creeped out. I was trying to sneak out the door. Yeah, and then Mike's like, that. hey, where are you going? I was like, fuck, Mike, you piece of shit. I was told sneaking out. Because I saw you trying to get, a, get a, make a clean getaway. Dude. Yeah, you, that's when fucking, I'm out here by myself. C can I ask you something? When did uh, Kevin start doing heroin? What, what's happening Whoa. over here? You're not yeah. supposed to tell that to yeah. the audience. Go ahead, show the chair. He's got parents and stuff. He's got parents, George. They should know what he's doing. He's got no parents. He gets an he's making an appearance. It's, he's actually being on Ellen. <laughs> Yo, what if we actually do run all of this? An hour and 20 minutes. We need one more. No, fuck <laughs> you, bro. This is not a fucking... <laughs> that episode Dylan. that could have I have been. to say this. I have to say this. I have to say this. You're fucking fired. <laughs> You're fu you are fucking shit canned for the hundredth time. Remember when I said that in the live show and everybody got really sad? Yeah, yeah Dylan, our live audience loved the way you dance. Well, did you the see? The one way you run an aerobics class. <laughs> Dylan was out here doing the YMCA before our aerobics, before our live audience. They moaned, though, when you they said that. They were sad. They, they were super moaned. sad. Dylan's it's all fired. a joke. They're it's like, all a joke. What? <laughs> no, they, no they, one girl goes, one girl goes, I hear a girl go, why? <laughs> From the audience. She goes, why? I was like, I'm kidding, dude. Dylan's yeah, it's no, Dylan's cousin from Dayton. Uh, here's what I think. I think you guys should have Why kids when you're ready. Why did you just say like you were from what? Like you're uh, Morty. Just... Never be Why did you just say like you were Morty? Jeff, you has kids. He's so serious. He goes, he'll never be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Every... Jeff's baby is funny, dude. How old is your kid now? She's almost two. She's almost two. Is terrible two th a real thing? A terrible two? Is that real? She's she's good, but she has some times where she gets a little bit more. You know, I own ten percent of that kid. She, Is that she, true? she signed a contract Jesus. when she was about, what, two weeks old? Really? I got 10% of her um, in, for perpetuity. I, so, I for, just, for, yeah, she, well, she, she signed it. Well, why is she not working, Jeff? <laughs> why is she not why working? Why is she not working? What kind of skills thus far has, can she offer for Team jump. Maverick? What? Jump. She can she jump. Can jump? She, Wait, are you going to put your kid in? She also goes, she also goes, <laughs> drive, drive, drive. 
She can tell me yeah. to, to what get a doing. car from A to B. Cool. Wait, wait, wait. But what I'm but but what I'm asking, I guess, is why would you, why this is what I'm saying. You should have just been on the podcast. Well, go yeah, as soon in. as you sit down. They know what's gonna walk in. Can I just can I just ask this really quick? She's. It sounds to me like you're saying that she's do, going through character development. We would do this kind of stuff at corporate. Like she's yeah. going to seminars. She's working on that kind of shit. But I don't think that's any excuse to not have some sort of valid output from her. At the same time, like she should be. She should be creating. She should be providing some sort of. Am I, am I a bad parent because she's not creating? No, I just think you're a shitty manager. Oh, okay. I mean, you're 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 supposed to be. You're, I would assume you're managing her as well. No, my girlfriend manages her. Got it. So, cause, <laughs> because I, I've seen the contracts, you didn't even do a right of warring nations. What's it called again? Uh, it's it's uh, um, uh, best of... Uh, favored, 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 oh, favored, favored nations. Countries. Favored nations. Favored nations. I don't, I don't think that contract got a court approval because of her age. So I thought Because they're underage, under 18. If you sign a contract, you then have to go and get it ratified by the court. And I don't think that happened, actually. Wait, this is an actual thing? You yeah, had a contract yeah, with your kids? Yeah. I didn't. He did. What yeah. are you doing, bro? He did. When I turned around. No, was, he wasn't asked. He had, he had my child sign a contract like this. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He wait. shouldn't have That's gone how there. sick he is. Bro. Yes. That's how sick he is. What's wrong with you, That's dude? That's actually fucked up, George. George. What the fuck is George, wrong George, with George, you? George, with a, with a magenta crayon. I'm not even kidding. You, you know what bothers with me more the most? With a whole hand fist. Is that he like, let it go because he's around. managing him. I and he knows around. it's going to come back to him. Yeah. He eats too, dude. Yeah. We all eat. Because he gets you, a percentage she of the two, yeah. man. No, not. She wasn't. She was, like he said, two weeks old. <laughs> dude, dude. But hold on. Dude. Dude, dude. But is there any. You need a therapist. <laughs> I know, I one. know, but I, I keep ignoring Yeah, her. but not the hot one that you just look at. Bro, what? How dare you? How dare you? Yeah. What, dude, you. this is you. When, when you opened up the first time with her, I was like, whoa. And then you turn around, you're like, I know, I'm working on myself. <laughs> I was like, I'm working on myself. My therapist just happens to be really good looking. So what? George, be a professional. And by the way, aren't you happy? This at least talking to somebody. <laughs> he's, not, he's not talking. I'm not talking. I, I ignore her. Why? You want to know the, the last Why? couple messages she sent me? Kaylin. She's downstairs. Kaylin, we're losing. Make sure that you get Logan to talk to the therapist. She said, I, "This is this is a real conversation." Okay. Screw answering your brother back. At least answer the therapist. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, "Hi, Logan. Reminder to prioritize your mental health and wellness. I'm available." Blah blah blah. I'm like, you know, my next five days is packed. And then she texts me after those five days. She's like, hi, Logan. We're past those five day packed days. How's the rest of your week? And I'm like, hey, you know, busy as fuck. I don't know how people have time for therapy when they're taking over the world. What do I do? Here's do the I question. Do? She goes, you make time. Easier said than done. But once you prioritize it, work in your schedule. It's just there. Facts. I think she's taking I said, what the if wrong you have approach. Only have time for building an empire and everything else feels an ancillary. I think she's taking the wrong approach. If she sent you a picture of herself, you would call. Yeah, that is true. Like you, a, you guys, both? Are, you got, no, 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 I, that, whoa, 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 masculine whoa. temptation to fuel innocuous. What does the Oculus have to do with it? He, he lost me at fuel. <laughs> You're talking about 3D glasses now? I tried to, I tried to <laughs> slay together the way up. a period of big words and it did not work. This is what I'm you done. need to do. You need to find somebody Should that Should I stay in George Leaves? Fucking thank God. Holy Let's shit. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dana White and Dana White again. <laughs> Guy? Whatever. I, I, I like headphones. <laughs> I'm half. I'm a narcissist. I like, to, I like to hear my voice. Oh, way better, yeah. yeah it, just, it's good, right? Way better. Audio's good? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay. Dana, why are you coming into uh, Vegas at 11.30 p.m. on a Sunday night? <laughs> seems like a weird <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's cheerleading competition in uh, I Orlando. I told you. <laughs> yeah. We won. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Congrats. So, I was going to say it had to be a big competition. Like, it was like worth nationals? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Nationals, yeah. She won? They won, yeah. Won it. It gets very impressive at that, at that stage. Sure does, yeah. They do flips and twists. Yeah, and they were uh, going into that last one. For some reason, they thought they lost, and they were all depressed, crying and shit. And uh, and uh, then, then the surprise was they they won it. So Sick. Yeah, I, it was awesome. I can imagine after the judges came back with the results, you had a conversation with someone backstage. And you <laughs> no, said, listen, I, you said, You know what? I don't, even, I don't even go near any of that shit. I stay on the outsides and... And, and just watch my daughter, and yeah, I don't get involved in any of it. You know, you got, if you've ever seen that industry, it's fucking nuts. It's like oh, yeah. you got- They make shows the, about the it. The cheer moms the cheer, and yeah. the, yeah. 
I'm not that guy. George, no, we stay on the outside and just watch. George made a funny comment. Seeing seeing Dana White at a cheerleading competition would be. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, what's something. funny is we're there and so many people walk up to me and say, "What are you doing here? The fuck do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> like I'm here watching little I'm, girls I'm, cheerleading. I'm recruiting, motherfucker. I'm <laughs> recruiting <laughs> MMA fighters. We just see if he's like doing the routine while looking at her. <laughs> like, yeah, that's funny. You you just came from Florida. Like you literally just, just landed, landed and came yeah. here. My heart out is to, I can go to Florida. <laughs> we're going to Jacksonville. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're you're flying out we're, after yeah, this. Yeah, we're swapping. Oh no shit. This what are you a, doing there? What am I doing there? Oh, WWE. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing uh, WrestleMania. The whole, the whole, uh, you know, WrestleMania. Yeah. Is that this weekend? No. 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 Uh, April second, April third. What are you doing? Just in, in Dallas. Promotion and Look, training. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. You know, you know, shows to build up to it. Yeah. I'm trying to go off the top rope. That's that's on my goal. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, I want to go off the top rope. Is that is that smart? Is that is that... Dude, dude, we're happy to have you on. <laughs> it's good to be here. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I, I texted you. I was like, hey, dude, we're gonna be in Vegas shortly. Uh, we'd love to have you on the podcast, and here we are. Cause yeah, dude, you're 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 a legend. You're <laughs> you're a a mogul, and and I've been a fan for a while. Thank you. Which is why I don't let my brother's <laughs> feuds get in my way of, <laughs> of, of liking you. Dude, I, in high school, the first article I ever read of you was, uh, I think it was about your favorite word, which was fuck. Fuck. Yeah. You had a <laughs> big, word. you had a sure. big fuck like sign in your office. It was in like a newspaper, dude. You know, I like read it while I was eating Cheerios or some shit. <laughs> so when we, when we first started, um, if you look at, it's a completely different world now than it was when we bought this company in 2000, 2001. Um, you, you know, most of the uh, editors at newspapers, newspapers still existed. They were still, they, they ran the world. Um, and they were run by these 65-year-old guys who didn't want to hear about any new sports. Uh, there was no internet. There was no social media. I mean, the world could not be a different place. And, and, and you did not say fuck. And I remember um, the first, one of the first times I was ever on ESPN, I said something like, um, I said ass. Like, he said he's going to kick his ass. And <gasps> everybody lost their fucking minds, man. It's like they were never going to have me on ESPN again. Uh. They weren't going to have me back. And so it was, a, it was a completely different world. So, yeah, I was one of those guys out there early on that was doing shit that you weren't supposed to do. Which is, which is. Part of the reason you're in the industry you're in, everything about it has been disruptive. It's funny how it's funny how some things have become more acceptable. I feel like everything has become more acceptable. And and, and in I other ways, in other ways though, yeah, well, yeah, not yeah. at all. It's this weird dichotomy yeah, yeah. that's the exact opposite. But like, even even dude, I remember this is fucked up. I remember the first bit of like softcore porn that I saw was like a Pamela Anderson spread in my dad's, you know, like bottom drawer, right? And it was the big Pamela Anderson spread. And now that's just like. You're every other Instagram model. Yeah. It's Times true. are changing, Dana. Oh, it's true, man. I mean, everything everything has completely changed since, you know, since 2001 when we bought the company. But, uh, yeah, the world's out of its fucking mind right now. Speaking of <laughs> out of its mind, what's going on with uh, uh, Jake Paul, Conor McGregor? Is that fight <laughs> happening or what? <laughs> uh, probably not, no. Are you, yeah. are you closed off to it completely? I'm never completely closed off to anything. I used to say that about... You know things, but I don't say that anymore. Smart, because you never know. You never know what could happen. But I feel like every time you talk about him, it's you're never really, really <laughs> that angry. Is it because you see? I, well, I said I, I don't hate the kid. Then he came out yesterday and said, "Well, now that you love me, well, I never said I love you. But <laughs> <laughs> I said I didn't hate you." Uh, there's a big hey, difference. Hey, hey. That's, that's what he does. Um, He'll twist your words. Yeah, but is but, it because he's disturbing the media, kind of like how you did when you kind of started? Is do you like see yourself in him? Is that why you're not that mad? No, listen, he's a, he's a young kid out there trying to make some money, and and I don't fault anybody for that. You're you a very know? calm person. I've never seen anything, I've never seen you get like really I'm, riled up. I'm old, man. I'm fucking old. I'm I'm old and tired. <laughs> I don't, I don't get fired up like I used to. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, you know, some things. Sometimes I do, but. Not not much anymore. Not much pisses me off anymore. Do you, do you see a route for whether it be uh, Jake or or somebody else from that space uh, getting into like a, a main card UFC fight if it were to you know do tremendous things for the for the bottom line? Is that is that something you're interested in doing at all? Or everything we do kills the bottom. I mean, we 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 have 
the most successful co- successful combat sports business of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it's it, and what we do here is completely different than what him and his brother are doing. You know what I mean? The, the, I'm looking for the absolute best in the world. These guys who have trained their whole life, they, they fight in these smaller shows, and then they make it to the UFC, and, and we've put the best against the best. It's just, it's just not what we do. There's a market for what these guys do, and there's, there's <laughs> money to be made in it. You know? For um, sure. Not saying that I don't do those type. Like, I brought Brock in. But Brock won the, won the heavyweight championship. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I brought CM Punk in. That one didn't work out as well as Brock. <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, it's not like I don't try to do these. When there's the Floyd Connor fight, you know, the fans wanted to see it. Everybody wanted to see it. That fight took on a life of its own. Floyd and I got together and figured it out and it made sense and we did it. So, what do you, so, so do you think that? that uh jake probably has a little bit more to prove to you as a as a fighter like like what can he do to to deserve a a, a real look at that being a possibility well he shouldn't even be fighting conor mcgregor these guys are fucking huge Mm -hmm. he's huge his brother's huge i mean what's your brother six one yeah 210 yeah conor mcgregor's 145 155 pounds oh he fights that low i thought he i thought he fights like one I thought he would fight like what, he, he's looking a bit thick now. He's yeah. looking a bit thick. Yeah. I think the argument is that he is at such a higher skill level, and that was that was why Floyd t- took me on, right? Hundred percent. I'm, I'm I'm bigger, but he's a fucking god. He's but what fucking... did Floyd figure out? You were so big, and you <laughs> you figured out how to tie him up, and 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 you know what I mean? It's just there's weight classes for a reason. Yeah. And uh, what if what if Jake can cut to 145? <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just cuts half his body off. Like, how do you do that? Jake brought the type of guy to cut off a limb to make a weight class. Do, do, do you think he could cut to, uh, you think he could make 70? One set. Yeah. I don't yeah. think so. Exactly. I don't think so. That's, it's such a stretch. And, and it's a stretch for Connor to, to, to fight at 70. You know what I mean? He fought Nate at 70. But that, that isn't his fucking weight class. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah. But, okay, okay. Fuck the Conor thing for a second. What what about what about any other fight? Like like if I wanted to do a UFC fight, is that something you'd entertain? Who who would you want to fight? I don't know. You you have wrestling, and boxing. I could get it done. Do you ever do jujitsu? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I could get it done, Dana. I'm not saying no. Dana, sign me. I'm not saying no. <laughs> Dana, sign me. Dana, <laughs> sign me now. I'm not saying no. Fantastic. Is there is there a, is there a part of you that is there a part of you that because of uh Jake's approach to dealings and how he uses that that the attitude and style that he uses to drive media attention and that being off putting to people like yourself obviously you guys have had this feud going is that something that would affect that would uh, affect your decision making no it was it was never off putting to me i mean in this business you know it, it's about attention how much attention can you get but more importantly who gives a shit who cares that you're going to fight this guy on, on Saturday night. You got to make people care. You got to make people stay home. They have a lot of different choices on Saturday, what to do with their time. You got to make them stay home and pay for it. Um, and, 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 you know, everybody has a different style of doing that. I, I, I'm not against it. I mean, I've, if I, if I really, the thing is with me, if I really don't like you and whatever, I won't respond to you. Got it. You know what I mean? I would have never responded to it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to see how many uh, hurdles your organization has had to jump through or, or figure out because, again, you guys are a disruptive um, organization. Even things from, like, piracy, which I imagine is a motherfucker. Right. right? We, well, you should know. I mean, yeah. the, your events, you know, your, your demographic – are the pirates, man. <laughs> yo, the ones that are... yo, y'all got to cut that <laughs> shit out. It's, not, it's true, though. It's true. Um, yeah, and we, we've taken a hard stance – against piracy and we spend millions of dollars a year battling it have to yeah do you, do you think the technology to stop uh piracy online is going to get better or do you think the kids are going to get more adept to figure no, it i out? think i think the, the the kids are way ahead of it Fuck. way ahead of it it's just uh you know you, you have to be persistent and and you really have to go after people you know uh, you can go out there and threaten all you know you can put that thing up on the window on the fucking tv that says you know if you get caught pirating this event you can it's a different story when you fucking get caught. Yeah. We caught a lot of people and, and prosecuted people for it. Sick. It's a whole nother fucking ball game. That guy's calling me up crying, begging me not to do it. Damn. All you had to do was pay 50 bucks. That's it. That's it. 
you know, and, and these were guys that were doing it in bars. Their bars were stealing. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, oh, we were, so you're, we were, you're losing a lot of money. This is a true story. I mean, where, where were we? Uh, the guy, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee, and we were doing looking for a fight, and we were doing this wrestling thing. And apparently, a guy on that street, I put his bar out of business. And they were threatened that if I walked out, they were going to shoot me. Oh, shit. Yeah, if I walked out and did this fucking skit we were going to do for looking for a fight, they were going to shoot me. Damn. Yeah, no, that was fucking real. I was going to ask you if you've ever been put in that type of situation because this you're in the fight world, which is like yeah, yeah. people are yeah. you want to fight. Yeah, no, there's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. you ever been like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to get out of this one? Have you ever been caught in that type of situation? No. I mean, what are you going to get caught in? We're either going to... I'll tell you some what. shit's going to fucking go down. No, or some dude. Shit isn't gonna go down. I, I get you know nervous I mean? for you when I see you standing between these fighters who look like they yeah, want to eat each other alive. I'm getting too old for that shit. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, these guys are, are fucking big, fast, fucking crazy. Str- like, I'll, I'll tell you the, the one that made me go, holy shit. Why am I even fucking standing here? This <laughs> yeah. Fucking stupid. It, it was uh, 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 the Black Beast, and uh, and, and I want to th- I want to say it was uh, Blades, Blades and the Black uh, Beast. Uh. Any any of those big fucking heavyweights, man. Right, they're, right. they're so powerful and and it's just like like what are you gonna they, do? Nothing. Yeah. They'll fucking <laughs> I'll land in like the sixth row. I will get ragdolled. It, it, yeah, if if they really want to go. You gotta we, we need a lot more people to break those guys up. I just experienced this. This is why I know, especially now, I have so much more empathy for you. We did this uh, slap fighting championship in yeah, yeah. Uh, Columbus, which, by the way, is fucking insane. That that event it was insane. Um, and I, I I did I was the Dana White of slap fighting for the day, yeah. and I had to stand between these guys and. Bro, I wasn't gonna do shit. <laughs> I was horrified. These guys are what three hundred seventy pounds, and so you stand there. Is it? Just, for, what, for the picture, for the show? No, nah, it's the... more out of respect that hopefully they won't, you know. Because you're the boss. That they won't fucking do it to me, exactly. You're there to fight on Saturday. You're not there to No matter what you say leading up to the fight or how much you hate this guy or whatever, the fight's on Saturday. And if if something breaks out on stage, first of all, it has the opportunity to, to uh, ruin everybody's money on Saturday, right? It also, uh, you, you can hurt people. Something else could break out inside the arena and it could get crazy. And uh, and we'll get in trouble by, by the athletic commissions. Really? And yeah, you, you get you get in trouble for that shit. But it's such a Every, good show. But that's what everybody thinks. Oh, they must love that because of the paper. Yeah. No, no, now we look like a bunch of fucking monkeys and, and, <laughs> and uh, the, the athletic commission thinks we can't handle our business. You know what I mean? It's, it's not... It's not good. Trust me, it's you're, bad. You're you're a real professional about it because and, and they I, can't let these guys touch each other. Uh, Cannot happen. And you know, you fought. Everybody here is a man. If you get fucking disrespected in front of the whole world by somebody, whether he slaps you, kicks you, punch you, and it happens at the press conference on Wednesday, the only fucking thing he's thinking about is, I'm gonna get his ass back on Friday during the weigh-ins and. You just we can't let that happen. Yeah, yeah. Even even like the thing with Khabib, when he jumped over the. Look, look, look. Well, that started with they grabbed Artem, they caught him in a hallway somewhere. Connor's buddy, Artem, and 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 they fucking grabbed him and smacked him around. Connor jumped on a plane from Ireland with twenty goons and and came out here, and that's what happens. Damn. That's another reason. There's just another. Example of why that shit can never happen at an event. But it's such a good show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Connor went to fucking crazy. jail for that. Connor went to jail. <laughs> Connor was sued by multiple people, and and th- and that thing, and you know, for, for throwing, us, for throwing the dolly through the bus. Yeah. Okay. And for us, it, it was uh, he launched that, that thing launched too. It. What's a it, PR nightmare for what's, us. What's it been like, like? working with conor mcgregor like what's that experience been like for you yeah it's been good it's been it's been uh you know if you look at what he's done uh in europe and australia for us and and the united states you know he's the first real megastar that the ufc had so um you know there's been some interesting times (laughs) he's an interesting dude to deal with but uh for the most part it's been awesome what do you see for his future i don't know man i it just it's uh, how much desire does he have to keep doing this and, and what kind of a level can, can he maintain with the lifestyle that he has now? You know what I mean? What do you mean by that? He's, he's got shit loads of money. Yeah. You know, and this isn't a business where, 
you make shit loads of money and stay on top unless you're a very special individual mm-hmm. mentally and in every other way. Who's who's the toughest fighter in the UFC right now? God, that's a tough one. It's got to be Sean O'Malley. <laughs> I want to talk, talk about Sean that O'Malley is, 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 is definitely a rising star, but you guys, got, the guy just fought yesterday. His name's Pajeda. He's the guy who fought uh, Israel Adesanya twice in kickboxing and beat him. Bad dude. There's so many bad dudes in the yeah. UFC. Yeah. For a while, we thought Masvidal was was the. He is. He is one. He's one of the yeah. best. Yeah. I mean, that kid came up. Street fighting, fighting yeah. on the That's streets. That's the coolest Miami, shit ever. Right? That he was on the YouTube fighting with Kim, under Kimbo Slice or yeah. with Kimbo. Yeah. In like yeah. The street, oh, he did like backyard boogies? Yes, dude. Yeah. Back in the day. Oh, damn. Back in the day. And they become this crazy UFC fighter. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. Yeah. he, he uh, So Mike, the guy who managed Kimbo and took care of him uh, in the early days, was, was Masvidal's guy, too. Oh, He sick. actually sh- showed up to the fight. Uh, he was there to watch the Masvidal fight the other night. Great dude. Yeah. So... So, you know, I used to talk all kinds of shit about Kimbo, you know, when Kimbo wasn't in the UFC. He's a bum. He'll always be the toughest guy at the barbecue and shit like that. But, you know, uh, then we ended up talking. Again, you think you'd never do a deal with somebody. So we end up doing this deal uh, with these guys. We meet him at a hotel room here in Vegas, me and Lorenzo, my, my old partner. And we're going into this room with fucking Kimbo Slice. I'm like, we might go in there. This dude might just fucking beat the shit out of me and leave. <laughs> and uh, so we go in. Couldn't be the nice, just the nicest fucking guy in the world. And uh, his manager, Mike, is one of the best guys I've ever done business with. Sick. Straight up. I mean, what he says he does, he's going to do, he does. And you couldn't meet better people. So don't judge books by their covers, man. Kimbo was a great sell. That was that was very, very exciting. Um, you know, I, I watched the UFC all growing up and watching Kimbo fight was cool because it was cool to see online be, go into something more traditional that I loved. Well, it, and he was doing movies too. As far yeah. as I can remember, he was like the first viral thing in fighting mm. when, when, when the whole internet started. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody yeah. was watching Tons that. Tons of views. It was crazy. Yeah. I think about this often because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just a marketer. I just happen to also be the product. And... Watching your organization and watching some of these fighters who are, you know, really, really incredible fighters, the best athletes in the world, sometimes watching their inability to sell themselves like I think they should right. is I put myself in your shoes and I'm like, okay, if X, who we know is the best fighter in the world, was a little more of this or a little more like this person. How do you how do you combat that, or how how can you make profiles of these fighters to get people invested in their character, like Connor does so well himself? It's true, and and that's why Connor was the perfect storm, man. He 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 had he could market himself. People loved him. He had that it factor, and he could fight. Yeah, you know. So whole package. Um, th- it's very rare. It's 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 a fucking unicorn. You yeah. know, you yeah. you find him. May- maybe if you're lucky, you can find a guy like Connor once every six or seven years um and 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 not maybe not to that level but even if it's even close to him it's 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 a home run um what i've learned in the business is you you can't expect that from everybody you know people say to me all the time why don't you give me media training why don't you do yeah. this why don't you do that you're either it or you're not you know and and the truth is you don't have to be all that let i'll do my job you do your job and, and we'll get you to where you need to be um you know, all I care about is that you can fight. If you can fight, you can be a deaf mute. But if you're the baddest dude in the world, we'll figure out how to sell. I mean, it, but also a deaf mute would sell. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's, that's, that'd be sick. That's hot. Do, do you have like a Do you have like a, a development team for for fighters? Like, is there is there a team in the UFC that's dedicated to like brand building and like putting together creative packaging to set to? We do from from our PR team. You know, our PR team does a great job. Lene, who's in here, yeah. head of Lene, PR. Lene. She, you know, Lene. Lene. They, they they do a great job of getting them out there. Um, you know, Lene, for instance, like when the girls, uh, let's say a, a a girl does something big in the sport, wins the title, whatever, she'll literally take them out shopping, get them all dialed in in badass clothes, and and then put them on the tour and take them out to 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 uh, you know all all the big uh, interviews that they need to do. Um, and we, we have a team that, that, that helps, um, you know, steer these guys in the right direction when it comes to social media and, and, and uh, where they should be, help them get on it if they're not. And 
stuff like that. that. We, we don't do any real media training because I like whoever you are, we'll sell it. Authenticity. Yeah, just be you. Like, just be yourself. Like, if everybody fucking acted like Connor, Connor wouldn't be special. <laughs> You know my, what I mean? My one, my one, yeah. my one little final pushback is like, like obviously, be you. Authenticity is great, but like, what if, what if you is just boring? <laughs> it's there. It happens. You know, you, you, you being boring is 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 what it is. How do you fight? That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Because people yeah. aren't tuning in to hear you talk. Yeah. WWE is a completely different story. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they have to they have to sell themselves in this sport. You, you, as long as you can fight and you're a badass, that's what people are showing up to see. They're not there for the speech. They're know, there for the I, fight. I know. I know. I just always try to maximize. I'm always trying to maximize. Like, what? again, if you can fight and you have that whatever. Cause, because I, I, don't, I actually don't agree with it. You either have it or you don't. Like, I think, I think it can be worked in. I think, I think. Maybe. But then it's not authentic. It's not authentic. But it I'm, be, I'm all it about authentic. Tuned. It could be tuned. I'm sure. all about authentic. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. You know? And, and you know what's crazy is a lot of these fighters, the way they're built, they don't even like to do fucking PR. Oh, of course. I mean, we got we to gotta beat them over the fucking head to do PR. <laughs> Dude, PR is the worst. Dude, <laughs> I, I'm a PR guy. When I'm in fight mode trying to do uh, camp and they throw me in these PR things, it's the worst thing ever. Right. And, I, and I, like, love media. Right. I can't imagine. I can't imagine people who literally fucking beat the shit out of other people for their permanent living have any fun doing any sort of media. They do not. And they don't even have any training with it. And it's a battle. Training. I have a question that's gonna come off like it's like humorous, but it's actually a, a serious question I wanna ask you. Uh, this whole um, people identifying it other genders, would you ever allow that in the UFC being, it being so unfair if one person feels like they actually truly feel like they're identifying as a different um, gender than they are? What's the question? Would you let a man who identifies as a woman fight, fight in the a woman that, class. I, that identifies well, as a woman. It, it happened in our sport. There was a uh, there was a fighter named Fallon Fox, who was a male fighter who became a woman, and he was out there beating the shit out of women, you know, left and right. And then finally, he ran into the wrong woman, and she beat his ass. Oh so. shit! Oh, let's fucking go. Yeah, she beat her ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, we, uh, ba back to the creative packaging really quick. Uh, Sugar. We we love this guy. I love this dude. Like we we he's, <laughs> yeah. he's and we, we very enigmatic and fun and mysterious and awesome character. But he could fight. Yep. What do you what do you see his his path looking like? Yeah. He, he, and, and again, he's one of those guys that has everything that you're talking about. People love him, and he's got that 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 thing that attracts people to him. Um, and he can fight. So we're just gonna keep keep building him up. And and we were just we got a fight coming up in Arizona. We were gonna try to fight him there. But something happened, and uh, he's not going to make it on that card. But, uh, yeah, just just keep working his way up the ladder. Speaking of working their way up the ladder, a little gear change right now. We got a, another – there's another podcast on YouTube. You may have heard of it called the Full Send Podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know those guys pretty well, right? Yeah. Those I are all buddies. Those, those are all buddies of ours. Love them. Kyle, Steve, all yep. those guys. Um, they had a, a pretty controversial guest on. He's our president. What do you mean he's controversial? <laughs> no, no, hey, listen. I'm not, I'm not saying he's not, he's not controversial. You know, I'm just saying, is he not controversial? Sure. Okay. He's so, president. So, 45th right. president of the United States. Right. So, um, did you make that happen? That that episode? Like, were you the one that landed the, yeah. the guest? Yeah. You got to land us a guest. Yeah, they, they, you know. We need we need it. We need we need we need, we need Rogan, man. <laughs> Did it upset you when they took it down? Well, that's where yeah, I was. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. It's insane. Why? Why? Why would they do that? Why would they take that? And what was bad about that interview that so should the, have been taken so, down? So, so the re the reason. If you look at all the shit that's on the fucking internet, that's what you're gonna take down. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking kidding me? ISIS is just sawing off somebody's head. They're like, no, I no, mean, no, that's fine. Leave it up. Take down that Trump podcast. So the I'm reason, dark. so the reason was, I'm Middle Eastern, it's okay. The reason was from YouTube was that it covered a topic which they have been uh, flagging and taking down, which was conversations about uh, election fraud. And and by the way, this is not from me. This is their opinion uh, because those conversations they believe were a contributor to what happened on January 6th, right? To the, to the riots. So, um, uh, uh, um, 
Shit, I completely lost my fucking train of thought. I think you're doing great. No, so so where I was going with it was um my my concern was with it was have we not reached a point now where we can have conversations about that stuff without being as worried about there being some sort of fucking like like bro nobody's good because full send puts a podcast out with the president and talks about the election fraud no one's gonna be like damn it was on full send like let's go burn down a fucking school like total crock of shit total crock of shit but you saw on the podcast trump told them this podcast will be taken down that's crazy he told them that foreshadowed it. it's, it's crazy um and yeah, that thing, did you see it on Spotify? It's the number two. I mean, that thing was on its way to, to, to pull some serious It got pulled numbers. from Spotify as well? No, no, no. no it's no, on it's Spotify. On Spotify. It's Rogan's number one and they're number two on Spotify. For, well, that, for that episode. Yeah. Because yeah, we're, the, we're the number one podcast in the world, like unequivocally. Yeah. Um, if you just how take, do we get into a conversation? Well, of, I'll just. I, well, hold on now. How do we get to a conversation where. Companies and private organizations can remove your freedom of speech. Like, how is it that a? Uh, uh, I'll tell you because the guidelines don't support misinformation, whatever that is, and who. But we're in a country that abides by that. Who decides? Who decides? What, in our country, what misinformation that, that's, is? That's that's especially what, what, when you start talking about COVID. I mean, not. I mean, at this. Are you fucking, fucking no, shitting I mean, me? I, I, mm -hmm. Who's got the misinformation? Who's got who the Who do you fucking believe? Who's got the information? Who's who do got, you believe? What, who, who do I believe, Dan? Right? I don't know. And where did COVID go? <laughs> where fuck did COVID go? Oh, this podcast is probably going to go down too. No, nah, huh? nah, nah, nah. Wait, hold on. Let me be the guy to say it. Uh, you know, this podcast is probably going to be taken. <laughs> where did COVID go? Where is it? Uh, That's a valid fucking Well, there's a question. war going on now, so. Oh, so COVID. Oh, yeah. So do you, like, think about this, right? We're talking weeks ago. This wasn't like fucking months ago or years ago. Weeks ago, we all still had to be COVID tested. There were fucking lines <laughs> of cars parked up for fucking miles for people to do the drive through COVID testing. And you couldn't go here and you're going to go there. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> the tents are gone too. They fucking packed them up. <laughs> gone. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Poof. I, fucking I, nobody's. I mean, dude, listen, I'll always sit here and play devil's advocate. Whether or not I agree with you, I'll sit here and play devil's advocate. The, the, the answer that you're going to get is we saw a massive, you know, 95% decrease in, in cases, whatever it was, based Incredible. on. Based on, <laughs> based on. I'm just, listen, I'm just saying. The timing this is me. fucking. This isn't me. This is huh? me. No, but we, we, had a, we had an Omicron surge, which got basically everyone. And what happened was, as opposed to I, I, what I believe, is as opposed to uh, efficacy of vaccine, you saw what a lot of people were calling for from the start, which was herd immunity. You saw everybody got it, so everybody fucking got it. So now, the, so now, people aren't getting it because everybody fucking got it. It's basically like every city's Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like so, so, <laughs> so it fucking just everybody got it. And it died with the Omicron. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Listen, like I said, this is That thing me. was fucking I mutating and, <laughs> and it was coming through fucking, you know. Omicron killed it all. That's it. It's over. All right, maybe, we all got it. Maybe it was poop. The herd oh, got it and fucking that's it. It's over. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah, I bullshit. Up, I want to bring up a point, a talking point. But you know what fucking just, pisses me so, off so, more than all of that is that they there were so many people that lost their jobs, businesses. So many families were destroyed. Nurses and doctors that didn't want to get vaccinated were fired. The heroes that we called heroes were now villains. And then all of a sudden, I just, I just, I just am curious, like how where the blame lies. Like clear, clearly, the clearly the response to it was not good. So let me say this. So this is the discussion. You've made some points. I've made some points. He's sure. Is this misinformation? This is a fucking discussion. Oh, no, no, God. it's a discussion. I, I, I don't believe it is. I, I think the way that we are handling the discussion, this is what our, our team would say. This is what our, our guy with the J would say. Since we are offering counterpoint to point and discussing it openly with, with both sides being considered. That's how we, America works. A hundred percent. But, but, and I'm sure you can agree with this. There are a lot of shows who don't do a good job of balancing point and counterpoint. And so you end up with these fucking steamroll. I mean, dude, go back to the days of fucking Alex Jones when he was on top of the world with InfoWars. He, he's, uh, but he's a bad I, I'm so bad. Example. You're right. He's an outlier, but you I'm just couldn't saying, have gone but, like, <laughs> further. Yo, whose side are you on, Mike? <laughs> I'm offering a counterpoint. And I, you know, like I'm not, tr I, I will always do this. I'll but always way play more Devil's people advocate. than Alex Jones so are getting ripped off the fucking internet. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Or getting no, fucking ripped down. 100%. Right. But 
I just meant for I, I sorry I, I sh just meant his ability to activate an audience but, with without a counterpoint. Do you but, understand what I'm but saying? But even nuts, right. you take the nuttiest of the nutty, are entitled to have an opinion in America. Let's go. They can have an opinion. 100%. Yeah. You know what? And you, as a fucking as another American, can agree with it or not agree with it. I'm a first gen because my parents were going to get killed for having an opinion. Yeah. So that's yeah. why that shit means I mean, a lot to me, bro. It's true. So so it, so his, it should mean a lot to everybody. It should mean a lot to everybody. The fact that Trump's podcast with Full Send got taken down is fucking disgusting. Yeah. And more importantly, it's scary. That's, Very fucking scary. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. I, th I think Voter it's fraud, wild. my fucking ass. Bullshit. Oh, uh, Dana. Well, now this... <laughs> What Bulls, will be so long. Shit. Well, no, but he's not bullshit. No, but he's not. But, he's, but we're not talking about. We're not talking about it. He's not. He's not making claims about election fraud. So he, we can say election fraud, but it's. I, I guess. Listen, that fucking podcast was getting taken down no matter what. 100%. It didn't fucking matter. That's nothing got, to do with got, election. You got fraud. a controversial political figure going on a show run by people who are 40 miles over the fucking line on everything the they do. They got a target on their back. political figure was the 45th president of the fucking Dana, United I'm States. Not, I'm, not de I'm not denying that. Or calling that like, no, you keep talking like he's Alex Jones. He's fucking the president of the United States. I understand that I'm not. That's insane. It's fucking batshit nuts. Be, but it would be even more batshit nuts to <laughs> claim for even a second that he's not a controversial figure. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not saying that. I'm just simply saying my everybody sound with that. Me too. It, we've been dealing with it this whole oh, day. Fuck. Oh, my okay. God. YouTube's ahead of it. They're just cutting it off while we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> can, we get that, can we get that looked at? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. They're way it's, out ahead of this one. I mean, look. <laughs> look, we... I'll tell, you when, I'll tell you when it's back. Yeah, um, we, we, but... but it's 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 wild. But this 100%. is this is a topic that more and more people need to talk about and need to discuss. It, it's crazy. Listen, I th th this world that we live in, we're all becoming so dependent on social media. You know what I mean? And and and, and it's like everybody's worst fucking nightmare is that your shit gets taken down. Oh no, I, I you know I don't have a, I can't run my business or I don't have an opinion or I don't have a voice or I don't have this or that. But you have to start looking at the consequences of, of something like the, the Full Send podcast being taken down. But what do we do? What do we I'm do? on it. So, oh, believe so, me, I'm on it. Are so, you working, I'm so working on shit. Legislature? I'm working on shit literally all fucking weekend I've been working on this. and You're, uh, pay, you're pissed. Huh? You're fucking pissed. Yeah. I mean, you should be scared, bro. Yeah. No, 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 100%. It, this it, is why I think. It's scary. I think uh, somebody it, said this to me and it really fucked me up. It says a, a, a prisoner who doesn't know he's in prison is the best slave. So all these people are like, no, it's fine. It's, don't worry about it. I go, you guys have no idea what you're building up to. That sounds extreme, but uh, he's not yeah. wrong. No, no, no. I'm, I'm That's, he's not wrong. Now. You're working on it. What, what are you doing? Hold on. They're not, they're not back, shit back on. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, mine's, mine's still not working. Is yours? Yeah. Is yours working? No. Me either. Take it off. Fuck it. Well, so what are you doing? What, what, yeah, what, what are you working on? What can people do to help? That's true. I'll, I'll start a petition. You, you have to start looking at... First of all, you have to start looking at alternative um, social media platforms that don't censor, okay? And it's one thing when you say, and it's easy, you, you know, you got a guy that you don't like, like Trump. Oh, fuck him. You know what I mean? Good. We, we don't have to see his tweets and we don't have to do this and that. No. Till, till you say something they don't like. Mm. Or until somebody else says something they don't like. Th th this country was built on free speech, man. It's, it's just, it's it's... It's our God-given right. And you don't have to agree with everybody. And it's actually better when you don't agree because what happens is it starts conversation. It starts debate. And uh, it's just one of, the, one of the things that have made this such a great country is, is that we have that right. When, well, when, when, when you have a company or corporation or government that can come in and fucking tell you what you can and can't say... It's just we're, we're in a scary place. And I was watching this guy that Rogan had on, and he said, "How do, how do you get to a place where a lot of your freedoms get ripped away?" Is it Peterson, Jordan Peterson? You do it, it yeah, little by little, yeah, little by little by little. Push by somebody a few feet, everywhere. and then they push them a few. And it starts to be, it starts to actually feel, feel normal, normal, especially when you start to do it to the younger generation who hasn't lived as long as we have, yeah. and and lived the life that we've lived, and and understand um, uh, what your freedoms really are. 
in this country. I think I think more than anything else, it, it's imp- what happened last week and just the idea of that all this happening in general is important to start this conversation. Yeah. Because because it I I I, I will this is where I will actually draw a line. I believe that it would be irresponsible to simply say fuck it, let everyone say everything they want. I, I, I on the internet, right? Because we 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 have the capacity and ability to reach people in ways that were never believed right and Mm -hmm. and and people can really mass message entire audiences of people on grand scale to 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 what end like my question to you would be like is there a line like is there a line there's not not with free speech got it you know listen you there's things like racism anything to do with hate of of other people and, and and things like that but as 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 fucked up as it sounds even those assholes have the right to a to, to, to free speech. See, that's you, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? At. Like, where is there a, is there a point? You know, and also and also. Draws- but I think that is. I think that's a guideline that people, uh, you know, ha- have have banned on social media and other things, where everybody can agree. Yes, correct. Everybody can say yes, even though I truly believe that everybody should have the right to say whatever they want to say or be who they are and deal with the consequences. When, when, when you're fucking. When when you're when you're dealing with hate and things like that, that's one that we can all agree on. Should and so, go away. I, and so, I guess what the conversation ends up coming down to is because it also becomes risky because there is an inherent right for private entities to decision make on their own accord. And so, technically speaking, YouTube, Google, Facebook, private orgs run by individuals who can decision make and say we don't want your business you know what i'm saying and, and, well yeah and, 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 and I, once again these are all counterpoints i'm not, these are not my views i just want to provide no, right. them to and, and to be fair uh, i agree to, to be fair on the other side if you're running a business like that i mean you, you, I, I can't even imagine the shit that they get on a daily basis from absolute lunatics hitting them up saying you shouldn't be able to do this you shouldn't be in that. and what happens is you become inundated with this type of shit every day but at the same time you have to take a stand and defend your company i mean i do it all the time we went through covid mm-hmm. i went through covid right you know how much fucking shit i got for going through covid it, w- it was insane like nothing i've ever experienced before the media attacking me every day uh people trying to fuck us at every turn. And, uh, you know, my, my, my belief going through COVID was, again, this is America, man. We don't fucking roll over and run and fucking hide from shit. We take it head on and we, we figure out solutions to problems. And this is a fucking virus. And if it's as bad as they say it is, we're probably all fucking dead anyway, right? You know where I'm not going to die? Hiding in my fucking house. It's just not me. That's good. never going to be me and... I'm going to get out there and try to fucking keep my employees employed, keep these guys feeding their families, keep the fighters fucking working, honor their contracts, honor my TV contracts. And we did all of that through COVID. And, 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 and I was the fucking devil for even fucking considering going through COVID. So how mad were you when you saw the tents are gone? <laughs> when I saw all the tents and the lines and everything happened. all yeah, gone. It's, it, it's not even that I was mad. It's just, I knew. Mm. I knew. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but early on, I'm, I'm getting this podcast pulled for fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, way to go. <laughs> early, early on, early on, there were these images coming from China, right? Oh, of people like, like dropping. Yo, yes, yo, yo. We yes, talk about this all the yes, time. Yes, bro. What, what, what happened? Were these images? Like, yeah, what were these? these dropping like right? flies in the street? We're yeah. like, whoa, COVID's and guys crazy. guys come out with like hazmat suits on from fucking <laughs> outer space and pick them up and put them in trucks and shit. And I remember we were at dinner. Oh. We were at dinner one night. And then it was like, like we heard that here. Tom Hanks got it. Yeah, yeah. And that was, the, was, like, that was I, the breaking I, point. I said to these guys at dinner, if Tom Hanks dies... The world's it's gonna over. lose their fucking mind. <laughs> right, yeah, Everybody's yeah. gonna go fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, that'd be bad. Right? So <laughs> what happened to those what videos? Is that, right? Those I brought, those. In the middle of the street too, and they just plummet. Exactly. Wait, why? Like, would they, exactly. How why did they know they, they were gonna just die? Why were you just running to death? Do, no, no. Do we even know if they died? Like, what were these videos? How are they just collapsing? Well, because we look back now that we know what it is. Right. I don't know if it, I don't know if it works. Why like were those that? cases? I, I so got COVID. Serious. I worked out twice a day for ten days while I had COVID. That's insane. I don't do that when I'm healthy. So, but listen, and I'm not dismissing COVID like it wasn't real. People fucking died from COVID. COVID was real and people fucking died. But to get, you know, 
the entire world to agree to shut down your fucking life for almost three years, right? Not let your kids go to fucking school, hide in your fucking houses, everybody wear a mask, all this shit. You put out some pretty scary fucking images of people just dropping in the fucking streets. <laughs> by right? fear, and they rule by fear. Now when you think back on it and you look at what happened, what the fuck was the camera doing there when that guy just fucking <laughs> dropped in the street and the truck just happened to be there with the out of space fucking hazmat guy who jumps out and puts him in a fucking truck. So what do you right? think? So what do you think? I listen. I'm not no, let's saying have it was staged, fun. but let's have some fun, man. No, like, like now nah, this is where it becomes misinformation. <laughs> no, we, did, we had Alex Jones. Well, they didn't like that. We <laughs> your, got in trouble. Your editor's going to be up late tonight. <laughs> He's like, oh, there we got your podcast. <laughs> it's why? 11 minutes long. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he showed up late for the fucking thing, so can only, we can only do nine minutes. No. <laughs> Why were they falling over? But you like guys that? know I'm not fucking making this shit up. I mean, this this happened. We saw it. My, me and my buddies fucking saw this happen. We were out at dinner that night and talking about it, going, "Holy fuck, this thing!" Tom crazy. Hanks can't die, huh? Tom Hanks can't. Well, die. Well, there is that a was, group. There is a group of people who would be super happy if, about that. So there's a group of people who don't like Tom Hanks very much. They think he's a. They think he's a. Uh, oh, they think he's. Well, he, <laughs> well, he that's hides the, that, kids well, and that, kids. Oh, oh, the Wayfair. Yes, he, they think he, he works for Wayfair. Wayfair. Yes, that, yes, mis, yes. that is not missing information. That, 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 well, that's a whole nother story. That, that's another <laughs> brilliant, brilliant fucking thing that these guys, whoever the fuck these people are, you want to talk about marketing geniuses? Whoever put this whole fucking thing together, right? It. it, it, it the way that they have divided this country, not just black and white and, you know, white and white and fucking if, if you're a celebrity, you're a fucking pedophile and you're 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 with Satan and you're drinking baby's fucking blood. And Pizza. Fucking, I mean, Pizza. right down to, to, to all, it's, it's fucking crazy, man. These people have done a brilliant job in dividing this country and making this country fucking weak, man. And, and the truth is, it doesn't matter what color you are. Or, or, or what you got going on in your fucking life. We're all Americans. You know what I mean? And usually what it takes, unfortunately, to bring us all back together is somebody trying to fucking hurt this country. When somebody tries to attack us or tries to do something, we all just sort of War. come back together yeah. and we become Americans was, again and we do what we got to fucking do and that's kick some ass. There was no uniting event like 9-11. Ne ne nope. and not in my life. I mean, it, it truth, brought man. everyone together on a, on a level I've never fucking seen before. Everybody, no matter how much they fucking hated their neighbor, no matter how much it's they true. hated their principal, their ex, whoever it was, we were one. We were one country. And, that, and that's up. what we need. I'm not saying that's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, we need. what we need is something that brings us back together again. And, and, and well, what is even it, if it's for it? another, you know, 20 years or something, get this country back together again. I don't know what it is. You know, you got everybody saying that they, they, it's definitely not fucking Joe Biden. It's definitely not Joe Biden. No, but is it, but is it, once again, question for you. Is it either of the, is it either of the two, those two in, in the, or by the way, the or current two party else. system, the way we're set up. I like, know. I feel like the way I was describing it on Twitter the other day, I feel like we're set up where you have uh, two, two people that are supposed to be working together on a school project, Right. And 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 one and if and depending on what the project is, if it's how to create green energy or if it's freedom of speech, whatever, one team is doing all the work and the other team is trying to burn the school down and kill the teacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's where we're at. They're not the teams are not working together. One team has an idea, the other team's only mission is to not also score, is to not put points on the scoreboard, but is to simply block the opposing team's shot. So nothing gets fucking done. We are at a fucking stalemate in this country because of the current system. It's so true. I, I saw this thing yesterday on, on uh, Instagram, and it was Kendrick Lamar doing this freestyle rap. And he's like, from Compton to Congress, it's bloods and crips, red versus blue. Crazy. Like, and, it, and he did Damn. this whole, I'm, I was a, listening, I'm like, that is fucking brilliant. So true. And, he, and it's, I love it's that. in line with exactly what you just fucking said. It's 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 bad, you know. And, and the why thing don't is, you be the president? Huh? Why, why don't you, you be the president? Dana White. So He's already a president. Me? Yeah, yeah, no. I'll stay at the UFC and do my thing. I just. I, I would I, love I, to I, see you talk out there. You're like fuck this, it's not I, right. I, I, I would. I would never. I don't know why anybody would want to do that to themselves. 
you know, and, and, and I, I'm always, I, I'm biased with Trump because I've been a friend sure, with the guy for 25 years. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's got so many good qualities about him. But, I mean, when he was president, the economy was strong. Sure, everything was good. Absolutely. But uh, I, I don't know the answer to that question, man. It's, 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 it's sad and it's scary and it's, it's whatever. But we need something, whether it's the president of the United States or, um, you know, something to unite this country again and get us. I think, it, I think together. it has to be the president. I think it has to be somebody that comes in and, and, and is able to unite the aisles. We've had uniters. We've had great uniters in the past. And I, it's, it's, it's really, really unfortunate not to, not to you know, down either of the guys or the past three or four. But it's like it, it, it blows my mind that a, a country of hundreds of millions of people that has produced some of the greatest projects, the greatest – you know, works of art, creative businesses, entities cannot put together a, a fucking champion, uh, uniter person that's gonna that says, "Yo, we're sure. not doing this shit. We're not we're not fighting anymore. I'm not against you. We're on the same fucking team. So whatever issue you're having, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about this and make these problems go away. Mm -hmm. And and no matter what you want to say about Trump, he it, economy was great. We were definitely winning for sure." He was he. Let's agree. He wasn't doing the best job of uniting the fucking yep. aisles. Yep. That's that's just a that's just a given. And, and I'm cool with anybody who, who who can come in and 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 unite us, man. It's 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 all about unity, and 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 it's literally that's what this country needs right now more than anything, in my opinion. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, you're think right. I what I've been seeing with my own eyes, I see a lot of people take information that's half the information. And running with it like to their death. Oh, that's massive. And that's like it, it's a problem because I'll have conversations with people and be like, "Yeah, but he said this and did that," and then I'll just get on my phone to see if he did say or do this. And I was like, "Where?" Headline culture. You know Twitter now. When you go to share sure. an article, it warns you you're sharing an article that you haven't read. It warns you. It says, "Yo, you are now sharing an article that you have not even fucking opened." Interesting. And and you're because you're about to make a caption. Uh, uh, there was there was one the other day about you know there's all these you see these news articles about uh, it's about this person and pedophilia or this person and this or that and it's from these like sh shady ass news sources on the right and left and all of a sudden you see a post come out this is what this side is fighting for you know what I'm saying 150 thousand retweets you didn't the motherfucker who tweeted it didn't read the fucking article it's has true. no idea it's headline culture is one of the biggest problems we have right that's now. what's 100%. dividing us yeah. and and. You don't know what's true and what's not true. Where the fuck did this come from? Is this real? You, you, we literally don't know anymore what's real and what's not real. And, and until somebody starts being held accountable, whether it's the people who posted it or I, – I don't, I don't even know. I don't know the, know the answer to that one. But somebody needs to be held accountable for that kind of shit. And it comes down to trust, too. There was a time in this country where everyone trusted – Sources like yep. dude now based on based on this last this COVID situation, the scientific community is now under scrutiny, and it's like dude since the beginning of time, your doctor, your the the scientists, the the, the people that that run this country run that side of this country were the trusted sources, and now, and the reason is because if you had a doctor who opposed the narrative uh, of what they were selling, you know they destroyed him. Got they it. would destroy those doctors. Um, how does that make any sense whatsoever? Mm. You know what I mean? When, when when you go to a doctor, if I fucking, if you went to a doctor today and he said, we're going to have to amputate your leg, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Go to another fucking doctor. Fucking right. You know you're not. You're going to go to like three. Okay? <laughs> you want as many fucking opinions on that as possible. I don't want one guy's fucking opinion. I want as many as possible if they're going to amputate my fucking leg. That's common sense. Yeah. Right? There was no common sense allowed during COVID. Or, you, or this is UV. the fucking deal right here. And if you think otherwise, we're going to fucking bury you. Yeah, and, and, that, and people will burn you alive for just even asking 100%. or being yeah, yeah, like yeah. curious to the situation. That's what scares me the most is that you can't even be curious about things or you're a racist or a hypocrite. And I'm like, 100%. whoa, those are some pretty fucking deep lines to be calling me. Yeah. Just because I'm asking well, a question. that's how you shut somebody up. Right. Oh, when you get not... everybody behind you, start calling them a fucking racist. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Nobody wants to be called a fucking racist. Maybe we got racist. Some, we got some problems. Like, yeah. We really do have some fucking problems, dude. It's true. Someone needs to step up, dude. 
Or you just start putting the dudes in cages. Put them in the fucking <laughs> octagon, dude. Then you know what? Bro, you know like Trump, you bro, you that? put Trump versus Biden? Because you know during, how many tickets that sells? During all this bullshit, <laughs> while all this stuff was going on, my my mentality was this. Fuck all these guys. <laughs> fuck them all. I don't give a fuck. I love that. Go do whatever you want to do. I'm going to live in my own little bubble in, in my UFC world and do my thing with my guys. And what's what's? I was very lucky in that. All of my employees, nobody walked out. Nobody, you know, nobody pulled any of that shit. Um, everybody stayed. Everybody fought through COVID with us. And the fighters, we're all aligned. We all think alike. We all, you know, we're all on the same page when it comes to a lot of the shit. So the fighters were ready to go. My staff was ready to go. So we, we built Fight Island and, and did our thing, man. Let the rest of the world go fucking crazy. <laughs> See you later. Now, your pivot during COVID was incredible. I was I was curious to see how a lot of big corporations would do it, but your guys was remarkable, and Fight Island was a perfect solution. Thanks. Yeah, congrats. Um, uh, I I have to go. I, I have that that plane to catch. Pesky flight. Yep. That, that pesky flight. Um, but uh, we could have done this one. Could have been. Three yeah, hours. I no, really no, love yeah. this podcast. No, you're you're I a really fucking smart it. dude, bro, for sure. Oh, this was cool. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, it was a real honor, dude. And thanks for uh, thanks for flying out here. Um, I was gonna say something else. <laughs> I forget. I'm I'm like approaching the brain dead level of the night. Oh, oh, this was gonna say, um, latest podcast we've ever done. I heard you oh, go yeah. to bed early. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder why you've been so successful. <laughs> That's semi true. <laughs> Depends on smoking weed. Um, uh, but yeah, bro, Dana White, thanks for going on the pulse, bro. Appreciate you guys. If you're not, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. We love you. We'll see you next time. Peace.